Are there acceptable uses of blackface? I'm Dara Star Tucker, and this is The Breakdown. There was this interesting category of black and brown face on television, mostly in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, that was meant to call out racism. Usually a character would do something misguided, and black or brown face would be used to teach some deeper lesson about racial and cultural sensitivity. Archie Bunker had a black face episode, as did Bewitched, Give Me a Break, and The Golden Girls. The problem that I have with a lot of these very special episodes is that although they were ostensibly meant to teach, it's still very clear that the gag of having a white person paint their face and pretend to be a black person was as entertaining to a mostly white viewing audience then as it was in the days of minstrelsy. The lessons are generally pretty flimsy, and you might start to question whether bringing that imagery to contemporary viewing audiences was doing more harm than good. It was still a gimmick, it was still done for shock value, and in most cases, it was still deeply offensive. The Bewitched episode, for example, was very well-intentioned. Samantha uses her powers to turn her family skin brown momentarily to confuse a racist. She turns him brown, too. I'm sure at the time this was seen as very forward-thinking, but looking back on it, it just feels cringy to see these characters all painted up in brown makeup. Using blackface to stand up to racism is an interesting tactic. If there's ever been a smart use of this, I'd say it was on The Dick Van Dyke Show in an episode called A Show of Hands from 1965. Rob and Laura are invited by an NAACP-like organization to accept an award on behalf of The Alan Brady Show that highlights the show's exemplary record on diversity. The day that they're set to accept the award, Rob and Laura accidentally get black dye all over their hands. What sets this episode apart from some of the clumsier attempts to use this device as a teaching tool is that there's never a time when the characters in the audience are not acutely aware of the problematic nature of Rob and Laura's conundrum. There are never any attempts to squeeze a few cheap laughs out of the sight gag. It also helps that no one is painting their face or doing any silly dances that reference America's minstrel past. The embarrassment that both characters feel at their clumsy mistake is the focus of the show, and we eventually see this through the eyes of the Black characters on the show. It gives the whole episode a sense of humanity, and it doesn't make Blackness a punchline. Give Me a Break made an even more pointed commentary about the offensive nature of Blackface. Sam inexplicably convinces Joey to show up at Nell's church in full blackface singing an Al Jolson number of all things, because apparently these are the kinds of activities that eight-year-olds engaged in in 1984. This episode probably contains the strongest rebuke of blackface ever presented on primetime television, even to this day. But putting a child in blackface on national television to make this point harken back to the days of Judy Garland and Shirley Temple being trotted out in blackface early in their careers. It still feels exploitative and wrong. What's interesting is that newer shows like 30 Rock, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and Scrubs also use use this device, but with little to no focus on the greater social or cultural harm that blackface has done. The early to mid-2000s brought a rise in black and brownface on television, but it was often done for the inherent shock value, and none of the characters were ever shown learning anything. It's likely that because contemporary audiences are so far removed from the origins of blackface minstrelsy, the idea of characters doing black or brownface feels more original and less harmful than it actually is. It's really only been about 10 years or so that blackface in popular media has been roundly criticized, even in a comedic or satirical context. People were getting away with this as recently as the early 2010s. Many of these episodes have been pulled from digital and streaming services, a move I vehemently disagree with. Hopefully we're entering an era where this cheap device will be viewed for what it actually is, a strange compulsion to play racial dress-up in the name of comedy, one that usually does more harm than good.